Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at customizing the interface of the G1000NX at Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, uh, we're sitting here, the weather's not looking so good today, uh, which is perfect for my example because it's going to allow us to see a bunch of neat features that you have at your disposal inside of this particular tool. And again, in our previous videos, we took a look at you know, how to install it as well as some of the controls, so I'm assuming that you have some comfort with the operations of this already. So let's go ahead and start on the PFD side of things and look at some of the different options we have for us. When you're going to be making options, uh, again, we're going to be concentrating on map and hizzy as well as the PFD and options here. Uh, we have a lot of good choices here as far as the way we customize it and Again, you want to customize it the way that makes most sense to you. The way that I set up might not be the same way as the way you set up, and that's fine. That's a part of one of the reasons why, you know, flying is so great. So what we're going to do first is we're going to come down to where it says Map HSI. Now, the HSI map, uh, we have a couple different levels of things that we can do here. The first thing we want to do is take a look at the layout. We have what they call an inset map, which is this little guy here, and we also have the ability to have an HSI map. Uh, each one of these is basically a little inset that allows us to kind of get the exact same information over here, basically in a small small little display here. Generally, when I operate this, if I'm using it as a non-traffic mode, I usually like to come over here and go ahead and set it up on this side. Now, it's worth noting, uh, once you stick with the size you want, in the event that you want to change the zoom level, simply hold your mouse over the little uh, map and range control, and you can go ahead and wheel your mouse wheel to go ahead and zoom in and out. Again, you could use this as like a broad view, and you could use this as a tight view, or you could do vice versa. It's not really critical. You can even shut the map off if it gets distracted. Next thing we want to take a look at is a couple other options. Now, the first one here is going to be detail level. What is detail level. Let's take a look. So if you set detail all, you're going to get all these major airports all spread around the map here. If you set it down to detail three, it's going to take away just a couple of the uh, nav aids. Down to detail two, notice it strips all the airspaces. Down to detail one, it's only going to show you your flight plan. In this case, uh, we don't have a flight plan today, so we're not going to get anything past that. So depending on how you like to fly, uh, some people like to put all the detail on this map and none of the detail on that map. It's completely up to you. It's your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the detail all low there. Next button is going to be traffic. In the event that we have any traffic, you'd see a little diamond with a little line popping through it as well as its relative altitude to you. The button here, uh, this one confuses people a little bit. This is called Rel Terror. What does that do? It makes your screen look like this. Now, what it does is it tells you if there's any terrain that you need to be concerned about. In this case, uh, because my altitude is only 2,000 feet here, you notice all this terrain is all in red, meaning it's less than 1,000 feet from us. Yellow is going to be between 1,000. Green is going to be roughly about 2,000 feet up. You'll notice there's a couple little valleys as well as, you know, this big you know, body of water, which is significantly lower. If we were to gain altitude, you'll notice now as the uh, things kind of disappear. Now, one of the things I love about this is um, it's basically a very, very, very poor man's uh, terrain radar here because I can zoom in to say four or five nautical miles and I can use this as a way of saying, oh, there must be a hill right over here. Next thing we're going to take a look at is going to be the next rad option. But before I press that, I'm going to shut off that because uh, it's going to burn your eyeballs a little bit. Next rad basically gives you the ability to suck in weather into the airplane. So I'm going to go ahead and press this button. And like I said, I chose a nice nasty day here to kind of demonstrate this point. And you're going to notice that nothing appears on the screen. Uh, the reason nothing appears on the screen is because uh, the next rad is a little picky. On this screen especially, uh, good luck trying to get it to display. On this screen, we'll get next rad to work because there's, uh, <laughs> as you can see, quite a bit of rain out there. So we should be able to pick something up on here. Ideally, you'd see big splotches of a different color kind of give me a little heads up. So I'll go ahead and pop over to topo mode, uh, zoom back out. Topo is just going to give you an idea of the terrain around you. Again, it's like a very, very poor man's, you know, radar here, kind of a thing like that. So again, pick these options as you choose. And like I said, I have no recommended method. Uh, one cool trick, uh, if you press the menu button, unfortunately, we don't have the ability to tweak some of these options here. But one of the things it does warn you is this is heading up at the top. Uh, the reason that's important is because that just means we're pointing where the airplane is actually going towards. That also means the map will rotate around us as we turn. Some people don't like that. Now, it's also worth noting at this point that if you go into the settings page here, you're going to see a lot of fun little kind of like quirks and things like that, that you have the ability to kind of zip around and sort of change. It's just worth noting that you can always come in here and tweak some of these options, and they may be related to some of the stuff over there. Just be kind of mindful how you set it up, because you want to make sure it makes sense for you. Oh, we also have the setup too? No, we don't. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. So that's it as far as the inset map goes. Again, if we wanted to, we could put it like here into the hizzy, but um, I don't know. I find this just cluttered, but again, everybody's going to be a little different. Some people just shut it off. Pick the way you want to do it. The next button we're going to take a look at is going to be, and we're going to press back, the PFD Opt button. Now, the PFD Opt gives you plenty of little choices. Uh, the first one over here is SVT, the Synthetic 
um, visual terrain. If you notice, we can kind of see like a flight simulator within a flight simulator here. You click that button off, boop, you get the old fashioned, oh man, I love this display. This, oh, this brings back memories. Uh, old fashioned display, you push it again, it goes again, this doot, and goes ahead and flips on the terrain so that you can see exactly what's going on around you. HDG label, uh, if you take a look off here in the distance, see how you have this little 270 there, you can turn that on, you can turn that off. Uh, this one doesn't work, which is a shame because it's actually kind of fun. But this gives you the ability to kind of tweak this in just a little bit. Go ahead and press back. Next option is going to be the wind button. Now you're going to have three choices here. You have the one that I like, which is wind three. This is an arrow telling where the wind is, its speed, and its direction. We also have the ability to see just the wind component. And of course, we can break the component into two different pieces. Uh, one of them, of course, being our headwind. In this case, we have a wind coming from the side, like a quartering wind here. Again, if you don't like this, you can shut it off. I just find it kind of handy, especially when I'm coming in for landing, just as a quick little idiot check. DME. So what I'll do real quickly is I'll go ahead and flip to a frequency I know has a DME available, and we'll take a look at exactly what that does for us. This should automatically identify it, which it does. Let's go ahead and push that DME button. So what the DME is going to do, if I push it, is it's going to give you a little display telling you all the information about that specific DME. If you press it again, it's going to make it a go away. It's worth noting, though, whenever you're working with the DME, is that you're not going to be able to change it from navigation one. So whatever you selected is limited. I personally find the DME to be a little bit limiting because there's a better way to do it. So I'm going to shut off the DME and I'm going to press bearing one. Now notice we've got this brand new line here, which points exactly to where that particular radio station is, and it gives us a direction and distance towards it. Now, if I press the bearing a button again, it'll actually select new frequencies. Now, for example, if I want to pop onto a different one, I don't think I'll get this one as this far out. I'm gonna try, I don't think I'll get to it. Is it gonna give us a bearing? I think I'm a little too far for that. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna give us a bearing, but it would give us that information right there. Let's try uh, the other one real quick, just for fun. Now I'll try 115.00 and see what happens. Oop, is it going to give it to us? No. <laughs> We're just a little bit too far away in order to pick that frequency up, but it would work exactly the same. So if we go to ADF, if we had a specific ADF, uh, there are no ADFs around, so unfortunately I can't show you this, but it would work the same way. Press it again, it'll actually give you a GPS heading. So if I actually were to select uh, where I want to go on a GPS, it'll actually display down here, which is, again, kind of a neat trick. I'll press it one more time, it makes it go away. Now note, you can have combinations of bearings if you choose to do so. In this case, I have two bearings pointing towards the Hartford VOR. Uh, if we want to have one bearing point this way, we want to use another one in order to triangulate our position in the air, which may be a bit redundant given that we've got this lovely screen over here, you can actually select those different options. I'm going to go and hide all this stuff out. Again, customize as you need to. Over on this side, we have our ability to go ahead and select the altitude units. This is kind of handy. We can actually press the M button and you'll get a little meter overlay here, which is super handy if you're flying in other countries of the United States. You also have the ability to switch between between HPA, which is going to give you this uh, unit over here, as well as inches of mercury if you're in a different country that requires a different set of settings. To the right of that, we have the standard barrow button. When you press that, it's going to automatically set this to 2992. Uh, sometimes you may want to do that, sometimes you may not. One of the cool bad things about it is it's going to snap you out of it. Now, if I want to adjust the barometric pressure myself, I can reach over here to this knob and give it a quick little twist and go ahead and set it to whatever power pressure that I need for that particular option. The other ones we have here are pretty much straightforward. And now we're going to swing to the CDI. What is the CDI button? Uh, that one's tricky. The CDI selects the navigational source of the aircraft. So if I press the CDI button, notice it snaps to VOR1, which is the frequency we have selected. It also turns green. If I press it again, it's going to select VOR2. Notice it turns green. If I press it again, it's going to snap back to GPS. There is no CDI for ADF. Um, I, I think that would be amazing if there was, but I just don't know what that would look like. I've never seen it. <laughs> To the right of that, we have the ability to go to the ADF and DME. Um, again, uh, when we play with this, it's worth noting that this gives us the ability to tune it. For example, if in the old days, we had a different frequency, we had what they call 388. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and do 3, come to this one, go ahead and set that to 8. Go ahead and set this one over here. Go ahead and set this one to 8. I press Enter, and then I press Enter a second time to go ahead and select that. You also have the ability here to change the DME mode. So I can actually set this to NAV2, for example. And then if I go over my PFD options, press DME, you'll notice it now says NAV2. Like I said, we're just a little too far away to pick up that DME, but that would be an excellent way to go ahead and display that that way. If we want to get rid of the screen, I'm going to set back to NAV1. This does not have any impact on bearings, by the way. I can just press the screen and make it go away. Next one's going to be my transponder. Oh, this is my different modes. Notice I'm flying without a working transponder, which is naughty naughty. I'm going to go ahead and press the altitude button so I can go ahead and let everybody know where I am. To the right of that, we have a couple different options. The VFR is going to automatically set you to your country's VFR code. I'm in the US, so it's 1200. Now you can press the code button, and this will allow you to dial it in. For example, if uh, something bad is happening in the aircraft, we can go ahead and do something like that to kind of give everybody a heads up that it is. If we ever needed to kind of return back to that, we can just press 
press the VFR button and snap right back to VFR. So when they call frequency change approved, this is just a fun little way to go boop and go ahead and change that mode immediately. To the right, we have our timer. Uh, it's worth noting with our timer is this allows you to dial in your V speeds, which we saw a little bit earlier. It also gives you the ability to go ahead and start a timer that can go up or down. Now, if you're in an instrument approach, uh, one of the things I always like to do here is I'll come in here and I'll set myself my uh, usual two minute timer or like two minutes and 18 seconds or something like that. And what I'll do is if I actually hold, oh, I'm going to go ahead and press enter here, switch over to this one, this is up, I'll go ahead and boop and set this to down. Now the advantage of setting this to down is now I have a countdown. So if I press start, this will actually trigger this timer and you'll actually see the timer ticking away in the bottom right corner here. An excellent, excellent tool for that particular purpose. On our far right side, we have the nearest option, which is awesome because it gives us the ability to quickly in an emergency find ourselves something that we might need to actually find that's nearby. So in this case, uh, let's say I want to go to Meriden. I go ahead and select it, direct, enter. Boop. And now I have a direct course to Meriden. I press the navigation button, and now the airplane is on its way to Meriden as fast as you just watched me do that. It's an excellent way in a pinch to get yourself to a nice safe spot in the event that you know something came up, or you just need to get yourself out of there in a hurry. It's kind of a neat little button there. Bottom right is going to be alerts. Uh, we have no alerts right now, but this is where all your you know, low engine pressures and things like that would kind of pop up. Uh, swing to the right here, uh, we have the menu option, which we saw earlier, allowing you to change the different things. We have the fiddle button, which we're going to go into great detail, the proc button, which we're going to go into great detail later and the enter key, which we've seen in operation a few times. Let's go pop over to our MFD page real quick. So we have a lot of similar functions on here that we can control. The most important ones for me are going to be the ones for the map options. Notice we have the ability to turn traffic on and off. I have no traffic, unfortunately, so you're not going to see any. But we also have this really neat button that says Next Rad. So I'm going to go ahead and bop that button. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And ta-da, there is our weather information. I can tell you right now, I don't think I want to actually fly to Meriden because I'm seeing that it's got that big, nasty red mark directly over it, which means I'm looking out the window here. It's going to be a little on the wet side when we finally do get there. But notice that we were able to predict that well in advance. And one of the scary things about Nextrad weather let me go zoom out a little bit. <laughs> you can see how we have a fantastic range with this particular tool, which gives us the ability to see a lot of things very, 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 very far out. So maybe it would have been safer to fly this way instead of that way, because it seems like there's a little less precipitation in that general direction. Go ahead and bop that off. Our legend button is a stress key. <laughs> and of course, we have the terrain button. We can switch from a topo view, which is going to let us see the terrain, to that rel view, which, like I was mentioning earlier, is going to be all green because it's at least 2,000 feet below us. We have a couple of thousand feet things, and it acts, like I said, almost like a terrain kind of radar that if you need it. You don't want that one, though. You can press that one more time. That's going to shut it off, leaving you with just little pieces here and everything along those lines. I'm going to go ahead and head back. Unfortunately, we have no charts button, which is... Ah... Uh, the charts button is so useful in this airplane. It basically replaces the tablet I normally fly with because it's so incredibly useful. Far left side, we have our engine key, which is going to give us a couple different options. We have the lean, which is a really, really neat tool for basically helping us get the correct mixture. And then we have the system page, which is going to provide us with some general information. One thing I just want to throw out on the system page is you have a reset fuel as well as a gallon remaining option. You press that, you can actually change the amount of fuel the airplane thinks it has. So, you know, you can come up here. I noticed that I have, you know, 25 gallons or 26 gallons per side. If that didn't correspond, I could come in here and kind of tweak the amount of gallons in here if I needed to. You also have the ability to quickly reset the fuel should you need to do so. Like I'm saying, I've used four gallons of fuel, boop, and now my fuel got reset. But notice this value is not correct anymore because unfortunately, um, I did not add in that fuel. I just reset everything. But it's kind of a neat little way to kind of see what this aircraft is doing. The lean function is super duper cool. It gives you the ability to kind of zip between different cylinders, in which case I'm always going to pick cylinder two because that's usually the gross one that doesn't like you very much. I can see how warm it is. And I can also very helpfully lean my engine this way. Coming down here, I can press the assist button. And what this will do is I'm going to go ahead and pull the mixture out nice and slowly, is it will go ahead and let you know if the aircraft's um, current temperature of the engine has exceeded a certain point. So I'm actually pulling this back. I've already pulled it back too far. Yeah, I'm way, way, way too low to do this safely. So I'm actually going to go ahead and push that back in, shut that off. Well, we'll save that for another day. Like I say, we're just a little too low to be able to carefully and safely set this. We need to get a little bit of altitude underneath us. So that concludes our next video on this one. Like I said, just wanted to go over the different interface and kind of how you can tweak some of the options. Uh, the big thing to remember is uh, customize it the way that works for you. You know, there is no right or wrong way to do it. Everybody's kind of got their own little personality when it comes to operating it. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to kind of go through the different features. Our next video will deal with everything to deal with flight plans. Enjoy.